Black Student Organization has been hosting many events this month. And Valpo hosted a TEDx event on campus. I'm Mason Gleva, and I'm here with a look at your full forecast. We have that and more. This edition of 15 News at 5 starts now. More. This edition of 15 News at 5. At 15 News at 5. 15 News at 5. 15 News at 5 starts right now. Thank you for joining us this evening on 15 News at 5. I'm Keaton Lewis. And I'm Zoe Barrages. The Black Student Organization has been celebrating Black History Month by hosting a wide range of events around campus. Some of their past events included their annual sneaker ball and a soul food kickback. Some of their upcoming events to close out the month of celebration include a Black History Month dinner Sunday at 6 p.m. in the ballrooms and a family feud night this Monday starting at 6 p.m. at Low Call. For the Black Month History Dinner, tickets can be purchased at either the Har Union Welcome Desk or, the, or online through a link on their BSO Valpo Instagram page. Tickets for students are $5, $10 for the general public, $15 for staff, or you can reserve an entire table for 20. The theme this year is entrepreneurship. They encourage attendees to dress business casual. All are free to go out to support and celebrate Black History Month with these events hosted by the Black Student Organization. Following a power outage at the BP refinery in Whiting, Indiana on February 1st, BP officials say the plant may be closed for up to two more weeks as inspections take place on and off the site. The power failure itself has been attributed to the failure of two transformers. This shutdown began just one week after natural gas smells were reported across the south suburbs of Chicago, originating from the Whiting refinery gas refinery. Gas prices across Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana have risen over 19 cents per gallon since February 8th, one week after the power failure, and will continue to rise as a result of the refinery shutdown. The Whiting Refinery produces on average 435,000 barrels of oil per day. There is also a nationwide worry as a result of the refinery shutdown, as the Whiting Refinery is the largest of its kind in the Midwest. The supply of oil for fuels, especially for diesel fuels, is already short of last year's supply, and this shutdown has increased the stress on the supply and the stock market. Valparaiso was talking on Friday night, TEDx, TED talking, is, that is, with the, TEDx main, with the TEDx main event occurring, this event was put on by the TEDx Student Organization and was quite a success here on campus. With 11 speakers from all over the country, there was plenty of information going around. The seats were packed with the event being sold out and no room to spare. The speakers ranged from talking about inclusivity, connections with different people, and much more. If you are interested in being one of the TEDx directors next year to help run this event, be on the lookout for that information. We have 15 Weathers Mason Gleva in the studio. So Mason, how's this weekend looking to be? Hey guys, well, we cleared out after that gloomy start to the day. Uh, weather headlines here, cold weekend, really cold compared to where we have been. It's really just back to reality. Another warm up on tap for next week. We do have a chance for storms Tuesday and Wednesday next week. Live look on campus, you can see blue sky finally starting to peak out after those rain showers overnight tonight. Let us warm up into the lower 50s today. Cooler where we were compared to yesterday. Uh, we've fallen actually into the upper 40s, so I lied. Uh, 48 degrees right now here in Valpo. Winds coming about five to 10 miles an hour out of the north off the lake. Temperatures nationally, you can see that warm up. That will gradually head our way for that warm up next week. Keaton, back to you. I gotta say, bring that warm air on. I'm excited for next week. Oh yeah, big time. I cannot wait. Time to bring out those shorts. Thanks, Mason. Coming up, we'll take a look at your Valpo sports. But first, Americans are spending more on their credit cards than ever before. Hear more right after this break. Americans have been leaning on credit cards since the pandemic, and Capital One's bid for Discover is a bet that's not stopping soon. Meanwhile, more consumers have also turned to buy now, pay later loans to sidestep rising interest rates. 
Karen Kafa is in Washington with what households can do to keep up with what they owe. This week, Capital One announced a $35.3 billion deal to acquire Discover Financial Services. If approved, more changes could be on the way for Americans who have leaned on credit cards since the pandemic amid inflation and higher interest rates. With collective credit card debt over $1 trillion, the Federal Reserve Bank of New York has also been looking at the boom in buy now, pay later installment loans, which allow consumers to make short-term installment payments on travel, concert tickets, apparel, and more without incurring interest. Their research found Americans who are already facing some financial troubles use these offerings more often, with the majority using them five or more times a year. Because of the lack of data and formal regulation around buy now, pay later, or BNPL loans, Odysseus Papa Dimitriou, CEO of the personal finance company WalletHub, worries that lenders don't have a comprehensive look at how much a household owes. A lot of these lenders do not have, even the mainstream lenders, even the credit card companies do not have a good picture of what's going on with an individual customer. That puts more responsibility on consumers to keep track of what they owe, from credit cards to BNPL. Experian recommends a budgeting app to keep it all in one place, setting up auto pay to avoid missing due dates and paying off BNPL loans early, if possible. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. NASA is looking for applicants to take part in a simulated one-year mission to Mars. Volunteers will help the agency plan for human exploration of the Red Planet. The second of three planned ground-based missions is scheduled to kick off in spring 2025. Each mission includes volunteer crew members living and working inside a 1,700 square foot habitat at NASA's Houston Space Center. The crew's tasks include simulated spacewalks, robotic operations, habitat maintenance, exercise, and crop growth. NASA is looking for healthy, motivated U.S. citizens or permanent residents who are non-smokers, 30 to 55 years old, and proficient in English. Applicants should have a strong desire for unique, rewarding adventures and an interest in contributing to NASA's work to prepare for the first human journey to Mars. The deadline for applicants is Tuesday, April 2nd. It's a wellness tool that's gained popularity over the years. Journaling is a way to learn about yourself and help you work through feelings potentially improving your mental health in the process in today's Health Minute. Mandy Gaither explains how journaling may help you focus and succeed in your daily life. It's a simple act, writing down what you're thinking and how you feel, but journaling can help you become a better version of yourself. Some people write for a few minutes every day, others weekly, Others just when the inspiration strikes. Dr. Sanjay Gupta, host of the Chasing Life podcast, says journaling is a great way to track both healthy and unhealthy habits and allows a person to maximize when they're at their best. He even tried it himself, writing down everything he did and ate. Suddenly I had this map of my own life and I learned a lot about myself. Like when I do my best writing, it's in the morning, and foods that inspire me, pickles, I'm not sure why pickles, probably my microbiome, but the point is I learned all this through simple journaling. It helped me learn how to best structure my days for success. Gupta says journaling can help with focus and productivity and allows a person to gain some insight into themselves. He says it can also help your health. Research has shown journaling regularly has important benefits, including stress relief, anxiety reduction, reinforcement of your own positive personal qualities. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. There's another tool called gratitude journaling. Health experts say writing down what you're thankful for each day can help you stay grateful and keep your mental health. Coming up after the break, Mason Gleva will have your full forecast. And after that, we'll take a look at this week's this past week's Beacon Sports. Here are our weather headlines again. Cool weekend in store. Warm up again next week. Chance of storms Tuesday and Wednesday. Live look outside. Skies clearing out after the gloomy start to the day that we had. Temperatures have also fallen as the day has gone on. Sitting at 48 degrees. Winds coming out of the north at about 5. Gusting closer to 10 or 15. Temperatures nationally, you can see all of that warm air to our south. It's going to stay there for now. It'll gradually roll our way 
as the weekend goes on, highs might be pushing 70 here Tuesday if we can see more sunshine. Closer to home, 43 in Michigan City, 59 in Romeoville, 58 out there in Rockford, Lake Michigan, keeping us cooler over here. Radar across the region, rain continuing to push away from us. There were even a few severe thunderstorm warnings um, in portions of Missouri and southern Illinois earlier. That is not going to be an issue for us. That will continue to pull away as skies hold clear. Nothing to talk about here at home here the past couple of hours. Our next weather maker rolls in tomorrow night. It could hit us. It could miss us. This has most of it missing us and being more of a Chicago issue. Um, maybe even a little bit of lake effect setting up over there. If anything, it'll just increase our clouds here tomorrow night into Saturday morning. Uh, taking a look tonight, falling right around freezing, and then tomorrow, cooler, we're going to be stuck in the low 40s. Guys, back to you. You know, I like the fact that we're not going to get the snow, but I hate the fact that there's still snow in the forecast. I just want it to be spring. Me too. I agree. I'm ready for the warm weather, and, you know, I'm good for rain. Oh, yeah, I'm 100%. I'm done with the snow. Yeah. <laughs> After the break, we'll see what went down this past week with Valpo Sports. I'm John Williams, and here's your Valpo Sports happenings from this past week. We, we look at the first highlight that shows Darius Diavero make the pass to Isaiah Stafford, the three-point basket, and one. Tough shot, big-time shot. Next play does show Darius make the dime to Jahari Williamson for the three-point shot, and that shot was good as well. The Beacons, unfortunately, lost that game to you and I, eight, um, 68, sorry, 86 to 67. The Vapo Beacons men's basketball team did also lose to Missouri State at Missouri State this past Saturday. Vapo did lead at halftime 41 to 38. Unfortunately for the Beacons, they were outscored 44 to 33 in the second half. Isaiah Stafford led Vapo with 24 points. Jackson Edwards led with nine rebounds. And Darius Diavero did lead with nine assists. The Beacons will head to Murray State this Saturday at 3 p.m. You can watch that game on ESPN+. Switching over to women's basketball now, the Valpo Beacons women's basketball team were able to capture a major victory against Bradley, 68 to 50 last week Thursday. Leah led all scores with 18 points and eight rebounds. The Beacons lost to Illinois State on the road, 64 to 78 in another game. Leah Ernest led all scores with 32 points and had 13 rebounds along with that. The Beacons will play at the arc tonight at 6 p.m. and will take on Delmont. Go out and show out. We wish both of our women's and men's basketball teams all the best. Go Beacons. I am kind of excited to see where the basketball team is going to go. I know it's been really rough this season, but I know that they're saying next season they'll be a lot better. I agree. I 100% agree. This was definitely a building year, and especially you have to consider it's a lot of new pieces for both the women's team and especially the men's oh, team, yes. and a lot of them are freshmen. So again, this is this is laying down the foundation. I know it sucks to be losing these basketball games, but a lot of times in sports, you have to lose first before you can start having those victories. So if they're able to bring everyone back and just build off of that, you'll notice a night and day difference next season. And then also getting a couple of veterans on the team as well, because we are a very young team, especially our men's team. Mm -hmm. So definitely making those adjustments will play out pretty well for this school. Awesome. Coming up, Mason will have a final look at your seven-day forecast. Here's a look at your seven-day forecast. Saturday is going to be kind of brutal. We're going to struggle to get above freezing, but Monday, Tuesday, and even Wednesday next week are going to be worth it. Tuesday is our best chance at hitting 70 degrees. We'll probably hit it if we see more sun. Uh, the wild card for Wednesday on how warm we'll get depends on how fast that cold front is here. But all in all, not a bad seven day. We just got to get through Saturday and smooth sailing. I do say I do like the 70. Potential. I do too. That I'm so very nice. much over winter at this point. Oh, yeah. It could Thank not get here any sooner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, I Mason. You know, I have a question for you. What are you looking forward to most about spring break? 
being home, seeing friends and family there, and just getting to relax for a couple weeks, um, and getting to see everybody again that I haven't seen since Christmas. Oh, that's very nice. I am looking forward to probably seeing my family and also sleeping in my own bed because I missed it so much. I second all of that. <laughs> How about you, John? Absolutely, just spending time with family and just living in the moment and relaxing. Very much looking forward to that. Sounds good. From all of us at VUTV, thank you for joining us this evening.